One of the innovations that I want to show you in this video is the pre-plumbed working wall system that is perfect for the contract supply market. Now the applications for this system are universal across the bath and plumbing market and they cover things like commercial, residential, hospitality and the increasingly popular build to rent market. Now, the beauty of this system is that it brings benefits to everybody in the build process. This system brings consistent build quality, speed of build, and it minimizes remedial work. Now, one of the key features of the working wall system is that the supply and the drainage is all on one wall. So gone are the days when you had the saw pipe over one side, supply pipes over the other. The whole thing is designed to make easy installation and easy servicing. Now, the first job that I've got to do is to put some elements board onto this wall. And to do that, I'm going to dot and dab it with KST cement-based adhesive. Now, you can build that out to as much as 50 millimetres, which is great, because if you've got a rough old wall, it's a bit out of plumb and so on, you can do a lot of your preparation, get it absolutely perfect for tiling. And also, you can adjust the wall thickness slightly so that it suits things like your shower tray and all the rest of it. So that's not going anywhere. And once I've finished putting in the mechanical fixings, I'm then gonna cover the joints. Now in the wet area, I'm gonna use ProSil and a flexible waterproof neoprene tape over those joints. But in the areas outside of the wet area, I'm gonna use an alkali resistant scrim tape and what I've got left of that KST adhesive. Now, once that design has been finalized, the drawing will show the exact positions for the soil pipe, the height for the WC, and the drainage for the shower, and also the basin. And it'll also show the exact positions of the hot and cold supply. Now, one of the things that I really like is the way that Abacus has worked in conjunction with manufacturers to get rid of some of those age-old problems. And if you're a plumber, you're an installer, you'll know that getting the wastes out at a low level can be particularly problematic. Now, this manifold here has been designed so that it will actually fit within the pre-wall, so we haven't got a little bit sticking out there, and you've got your low-level waste for the shower, you've got the basin waste in there, and of course the WC goes in the top. Now I'm looking at this from the plumber's point of view and one of the things that I really like is the fact it's all modular. It's a one-man lift. I don't need a high ab, I don't need a crane. I could bring each section into the building and assemble it very, very quickly according to the drawing. The height of the tallest modules is left 20 millimetres clear of the ceiling height to allow you to easily swing them up into place. And then they're simply fixed by screwing up into the joists above. Now obviously when you drill into the floor you've got to make sure there are no pipes and cables, but as I put these ones in, I know exactly where they are. You've got a 90 degree connector, a straight connector if you're taking the saw pipe straight out of the wall, and also a pan connector and a flush pipe connector. And you've got the other pieces which go onto the system itself. So everything's in the box with a set of instructions. Push that fitting into there and when you see the white pipe appear in that hole, you know that it's home and ready for crimping.
Now I'm ready to test the whole system. These are the test plugs which come in a wall and you can see a little bit of water in there. That's a telltale sign that they were actually tested in the factory up to seven bar. So we should be perfectly okay. But I'll just give those all a little check. Make sure they're all tightened up, not over tight obviously. Okay, so now the plumbing's connected up, we're gonna give it a quick test, just make sure it's up to pressure and holding all right. I don't expect any problems. In this case, we've got the isolating valves outside, they're in the airing cupboard, but you can have them behind here. So long as they're accessible through the shelf or through the cupboard or something like that, you can get to them absolutely fine. Also, this space, by the way, is good for things like transformers for your LED lights and so on. So plenty of room behind there. People worry about wasting space behind this wall, but you can take care of all the ugly stuff, put it all behind. And you've got three different positions to put this connector in so you can bring it backwards or forwards that's it that little reassuring click that you get there shows it's in nice and firmly and that's important because when we go to put the pan on after the tiling is done we need to push back into that and we don't want it moving so I'll just make sure that the soil pipe is secured all the way along and in the box you get a debris stopper for the soil pipe connection but you also get one for the flush pipe and then you can just board and tile around those and similarly we've got a tiling guide that goes up here which just clips on in place and then that can be boarded and tiled around and we've got a little cover that goes on and what I like to do is there's some pan connector screws here, so when we come to fix the pan on after the tiling, we need those. And to save them getting lost, if you just pop them inside there, it's a little tip, and put that on, they're safe and sound and ready to go. So these are the bolts that hold the pan on, basically. And you can see that there's a choice of holes here. You've got the inner and the outer. It's usually the inner ones that you need, but check with your pan because if you get it wrong, it's a little bit of a nuisance to have to move them over. You can do it actually, but uh, it's better to get it right first time. And another really good thing about these bolts is they're just screwed through. You don't have to cut them according to the length you need. You just get the screwdriver on the end, wind them in and out until they're the right length. Now this, believe it or not, is the in-wall basin trap. It's actually inside there, but it comes out of here in two inch, or it can be configured for whatever you want in the specification. So it could be inch and a half. But what I've used here is a compression fitting and a reducer inside to take me to inch and a half, not inch and a quarter, because I reckon there's no point in reducing this to inch and a quarter for this short section, just to bring it back out into the soil pipe. So I prefer the flow on an inch and a half. So I'm just gonna solvent weld these pipes, nice easy flow there with a 45 bend at the back and just poke that down through there, past there. And I'm into the soil pipe. Now this basin frame actually comes with the fixings and we pre-drilled for the particular basin that they've chosen. So all that is part of the package. So all I've got to do at this stage is to wind a couple of these fissure bolts in here and then they can be tiled around. Incidentally, when you're winding them in, just check you haven't got the pipework behind. One of the really good things that I like about this working wall system is that all the boards can be CNC 
pre-cut by Abacus before they arrive on the site. Because they know the measurements, the dimensions of a whole wall, they can accurately cut every single one of these boards out. So we're not even gonna have to cut them or measure them on site. The amount of time and mess that saves is really significant. Of course, a bit of a schoolboy error. It always helps to know where the studs are before you do this. So that's taken care of the wet area and you might wonder why I need to carry on with the elements board across the rest of the room. After all, it's not getting soaked in quite the same way, but I think that once you're using the elements board, you might as well carry on through the whole thing rather than changing over to something like water resistant plasterboard, which is a bit of a pain to work with. It's dusty, it's messy, and it doesn't provide anywhere near the same kind of quality surface that this does. So in this area, I'm just covering these fixing points and the joins with an alcohol alkali resistant scrim tape and that will be covered with the tile adhesive. Now we come to the part where we're going to be putting the shower tray in and this is a problem that plumbers come across all the time, how to get that waste pipe out, how to get it to the soil pipe. Now you can't go notching through the joist, if you've got joists in the way you've got to run that over the top and if you've got a concrete floor you've got to run it over the top. So the solution is to use this raising piece which is what we call a sub element and this supports the single fall infinity tray which goes on top. Everything we need to do the job is included in this fixing kit. So I'll just explain what we've got here. This is the trap that comes with the Infinity single fall tray. And this is multi-directional. You can actually go down through the floor, comes out in two inch, 50 mil. You can go through the floor or you can go straight out. Now we don't need that one, so we blank that off. They give you a blanking plug. I'm gonna solvent weld that blanking plug into there. Here, I've got a level invert reducer which means that we can go from 50 mil down to 40 mil, inch and a half. And obviously you have to put that level invert reducer at the bottom so you don't finish up with a lip. And also, this is quite handy, if you wanted to come out in two inch, you've got this adapter which will come out and it says up there. And what you do is you put that with that at the top and it automatically gives you a two and a half degree fall so that gets the fall going the right way but in this case what I'm going to do is use the inch and a half solvent weld the whole thing in there I just give myself a dry fit make sure everything connects up and then I'll get that solvent welded up now when I go to put the trap onto the bottom of the tray I can just gently lift it up and screw it in In this little pack is the seal for the trap and also the stainless steel bolts which we're going to need a little later on. So I'm going to put this seal on at this stage. If you forget it, it's very difficult to do it afterwards. So that just pops around the outside there. On this one, we put the second O-ring or seal if you like. So we'll just pop that in there for now. And I'll keep the bolts there so I know where they are. So now I'm going to stick down the sub-element. Now, before you go too far with this, it's always a good idea to put a spirit level on there so that you can see whether the floor's level because if you have to do any bedding up to get that sub-element in spot on level, you can do it with the adhesive. Now 
Now it's important when you're putting these machine screws in to pull this trap up into place that you don't over tighten those screws. If you've got a torque screwdriver, it's one Newton meter, which is absolutely nothing really, but it's okay because we've got an O-ring to seal it here. And on the underside is a big rubber gasket. So if you just get it just firmly up in there, it won't leak. And if you're doing it, make sure you've got all four screws in first before you start tightening up. So this back edge takes no load, but in order to keep it back against the wall and well sealed, we put some screws in. There are two holes there, and I'll also drill one just about in the middle, just to keep it back. So I've got to put the sealant tape over the top of this plastic up stand, but as a belt and braces measure, I'm going to put the sealant, the MD sealant, along the back first, and then I'll screw that tightly back, and it will never leak. Now I have known people throw this bit away, but it's quite important because it is actually the tile guide. It protects that, protects debris from going down through the waste, but it also gives the tiler something to tile up to. When we come to doing the wall, we'll have this tile here, which will stop there basically, at that level. And then the wall tiles, if I can just lift this one over. We put this six mil board in and then the 12 mil up here to create this very slight recess to stop this tile from kicking out. So you can see how it works there. That's all sealed up with the tape. So there'd be no chance of any water getting in there. If it ever did run down the back of this tile, which is very unlikely, and it got down to there, it would just drip through there and find its way into the drain. So it's important that we don't get rid of this, by the way. You do see people throw that away thinking it's a bit of packing. It's actually the tile guide. We're gonna put our trim up to there, the tiler is at least, and then he can tile to there. When the drain cover goes in here, there is an option of different finishes for that. Now, I'm not gonna pretend that I did this. This was done by the tiler. I'm not responsible for this bit, but I just wanted to show it to you to say how important it is that you get nice, neat holes, that you do everything as precisely as you can. We don't want a big diamond cut here with an angle grinder. That's not acceptable. On the drawing, it shows that it's been designed in 800 modules. So the first one was the 800 with the WC centered on this tile. The next one is the basin. Again, the basin basin is centered on that 800 and the final one is the shower over here that's the third one of the 800 and that is centered on the shower valve and the ducket and everything else so it looks really good you don't get that awkward thing where somebody's oh no you've got a slither of a tile and where do you put the cut it's all worked out So this is for a timber floor that I'm using this primer. If you're going onto concrete, onto a screed or existing concrete floor, then you would use a different primer or no primer at all, just depending on the nature of the floor. And the great thing about bedding this elements board on that KST adhesive is if we've got a slight undulation in the floor, we can take it out now just by thick bedding the adhesive and that saves the tiler having to do it because really the standard is plus or minus one mil, no more than that. So if you can't see daylight under the level, you're fine. This is electric under tile heating and not everybody has it, but in my experience, everybody wants it. And there's just a couple of things you've got to bear in mind with it. It works a lot better when you've got an insulating layer underneath because it speeds up that 
warm up time of the tiles you don't need to switch it on so early so this elements board is perfect for that because it's got that insulated core it will drive that heat up through the tiles you get very rapid warm up now when you're laying it you need to work out where your supply is coming from which will be outside the room that's where it will link in and then you'll put the thermostat on there you also put an under tile probe into the floor so that you can measure the temperature, keep the thing regulated and avoid putting it underneath basins and WC and places like that where you're not going to stand because it's a waste and sometimes when people put a pan over the top of it, it just cooks in that spot. So keep it where you need it and just work it out. It's very, very simple to do and when we put it down, almost immediately we cover it up after testing it, that is, it's important to test it and then we make sure that it's protected when the tiler comes in to do his bit. Okay, so the rest of the second fix I can do on my own, but when it comes to putting in the glass, I really like a hand with that bit. So earlier on, you saw me fitting the basin frame and you might have wondered what that was all about, but you can see now that it's provided the best fixing, really secure, really solid for that basin. But also this is really just a unique feature, if you like, of this frame. Obviously we've got our tappings here ready for the hot and cold supplies, but we've also got here a built-in trap in the wall, which is a piece of genius. If you look at it and get it out, that is the trap. And the idea of this is that you don't have a trap in the furniture itself. It's absolutely clear in there. All we've got is the pipe running into this. So that can be serviced. You know, we can get rid of all the hair and all the gunge out of there and pop it back in, turn it round, and that's located. But even better from there, there's still adjustment on that trap up and down, which means that if there's a slight backfall, and let's face it, who hasn't seen a backfall on a basin waste? If it was a slight backfall, we could just adjust that trap even after it's tiled to make sure that it runs away. So for me, that is such a problem solver that I'm thinking, why wouldn't anybody fit it? So at this point, I'll just show you, I've got the brackets here ready to hang the cabinet on. I've seen people hang cabinets in all kinds of ways in the past, simply because they haven't thought about the fixings. But with this basin frame, we've got that big sheet of plywood and we've got the studs there. So there's a fixing ready made to put that cabinet on. So no problem there. And the great thing about using that sealant rather than PTFE is that you can actually back it off so that you get it vertical. Now you can see that I'm using the chrome isolating valves here, the standard ones, because this is inside a cabinet. But if we had this on display, no furniture underneath, then I'd want to match it in with the Abacus Matte Black, which we're using on the rest of the brassware. Now I've shown this before, it's the Abacus Universal Basin Waste, which is a really clever thing, it's two part, so you can use it for a slotted or an unslotted basin. Obviously this one's in black to match the rest, and you also have a little fit in there to change it into a click if you don't want that fixed one. Now these isolating valves are universal, so you can come out with a bit of 10 millimeter copper with a nut and olive on it, or you can take that off and that gives you a 3-8 thread. But because I've got flexes on here, I want to change it to half inch. So I just put that bush on and I use this thread sealant again because I love it. Nice tiny squirt in there. On it goes and hand tight is actually good enough with this thread sealant. You just back it up slightly like that. 
And continuing the theme with that matte black brass wear, we've actually got this Abacus Metro towel rail, which is also in matte black. And the great thing here is that we've got four tappings in it. So we can use the 50 mil centers here with this very nice looking thermostatic radiator valve. So we can bring the pipes out directly behind it, or we could go into the ends with the pipes as you would on a lot of other towel rails. But here's the thing, we want to use this for summer operation, the electric element. And if you look, even that is matched up to the towel rail and they do it in full color range. So pretty good. So this is just a message for my fellow plumbers out there. I genuinely think that fitting these cisterns in these pre-walls is the simplest job in the world. I absolutely love it. But I know some plumbers aren't familiar with it. And I did get an email from a lady the other day who said she called in a plumber to service the cistern and he wanted to hack all the tiles off a wall and she thought that was wrong. There is a video that we've made which shows you how to service this system. So check that out if you don't know. It's really, really easy to do. And then the other thing is that when you're fitting the pan, there are a few things that you really, really need to take care of. The first is to get this dimension right, because if you look in the instructions, you get that dimension right, the pan will pull in nicely to the wall. If you've got that too far out, it'll always have that little gap and it won't quite work. So 10 mil is the space between the back there, or you can measure the 45 mil to the groove there. Whatever you do, get that right. And you can wind these bolts in and out, by the way, with a screwdriver to adjust them. So there's a lot of adjustment there, even when you've tiled up. The next thing is, probably the most important thing of the whole installation is to get this flush pipe and the soil pipe connection cut properly at the right length. Now, what I first do is put that into the wall, just slide it in there, and then I make the tiniest mark. Having got that mark on there, I now put the pipe into the back of the system where it's going to go, put that home. Then, there's my little nick that I made previously. Make another tiny nick there, only small. Now, the difference between those two nicks is what I've got to cut off the pipe. Okay, so that gives us the precise amount between there and the inside of the flush pipe. But, but, and here's the but, very, very important this bit, take off three millimeters, four millimeters from that pipe when you do it. And the reason is that if that pipe is over long, there is a little lug inside the flush pipe. And when you tighten the pan back against the wall, this pipe, will push past that lug and it can push the O-ring out and then you'll get a leak. Now that is the only problem that I've ever encountered with this is people making that flush pipe too long. So measure it carefully. The way I showed you just now is my preferred method because it always works. Take those three, four mil off the end of it. So long as you're going in past that O-ring, you're fine and there is a little bit to spare. So you'll be absolutely fine in doing that. And then when you tighten those bolts and the pan goes back against the wall, you know it's not pushing against that lug. That's all I'm saying. It's very, very important to do that. Same applies when you do this, but it's not quite so critical. But again, you just put it on there, mark it up, put it into the wall, mark it up, cut off the difference obviously chamfer it down 
and put the silicon grease on. Very important. Comes in this little sponge, by the way, it's impregnated with silicone. So you haven't got to go looking for it. You haven't got to use fairy liquid or anything else. And that will be the perfect job. Honestly, you will get no problem if you do that. Now here's an important point. When you put these push rods in, depending on how far away that system is from the tile front, you may have to just snap off a section of these push rods, which is very easy. They're segmented like that. So you can just take that off like that. Same, same, only different. Put those in, turn them around. Now, the important point is when you do that, you can see that it operates properly. And if they're too long, they won't operate properly. Never leave your fingerprints at the scene. There are various ways of securing these shelves if indeed you want to. Some people put silicone around, but I'd prefer to leave them loose so you can get to anything behind. But a good idea is just to use a bit of Velcro tape. So these are the adjustable feet for the grid. So we just set those to height. Here, we've got a hair trap. Basically, take that out, take that bit out and clean it out, pop it back in. Not a great job, but somebody's got to do it. And then that all sits nicely in there, sealed off. And then the final thing is, so there you are, all finished, and it's a pretty nice looking shower room. And because of all the preparation, all the thought, the design that goes into it, and of course the components, not to mention the labor, it's gonna remain looking a pretty nice shower room for a long time to come.